Okay, uh, Sarah Kumar Tora and good day. Uh, so we are going to proceed with the uh, first lecture on the uh, the EQC 3543 microprocessor. So uh, this topic will cover on the introductions of the microprocessor. So let's look at the uh, um, objective on this topic. So we are going to learn about the uh, block diagram of a microprocessor and a system based on a microprocessor. And later we are going to learn about the function of a microprocessor, memory and input output of the devices. So there will be a different videos related to this particular uh, things because I want to make it clear uh, because I don't want to make you guys uh, overwhelmed with the informations on each of the video. So let's proceed. So in the first thing, uh, first thing is uh, this is a normal things that I, I heard before. The terminology of a CPU which is a common wrong common wrong terminology being used where people say that the CPU they have problem with their CPUs when their computers breakdowns and they have problems on that. So over here in this image you have uh, a set of computer. So which part is the CPU? So over here we have two things which is this is the monitor and people a uh, few of, peop few of uh, people saying that this is a CPU which is uh, wrong. So this is a case tower, they call it a casing, which is to cover the motherboard and all the stuff inside your CPU, inclusive of your uh, hard disk, your motherboard, which is inclusive of the CPU and the RAM, and the chipset, so whatever chipset that we have. So the terminology should be correct. This is not your CPU. The CPU is inside this casing. Okay. So next time, uh, when you have problem with your PC, do not say that this is your CPU. You just say that you have problem with your PC. This is a casing. You have you have can, you can go and bring all this together to the shop for repair. All right. So what is inside your casing? So this is what is. Uh, what is inside your casing so you can see that uh, this is an example of a motherboard okay so inside here you got the motherboard so this is the slots I mean this is all the motherboard so where is the CPU is located the CPU will be located over here this is your socket then you are going to plug in your CPU okay how this microcomputer this is how computer is going to be work you must have all these things together then it can work so you have the cpu here and then you have the slot for the ram this is the ram which is the memory okay so that other than other than that you have the interface for the uh, input output this is the one that you are going to connect with the io so i'm going to call it here is IO this is going to be input and output so what is this so for example uh, we have a mouse this is your mouse so your mouse is the one that going to uh, navigate the cursor on the monitor right so you're going to move this one move this mouse and then your mount, uh, your cursor will be moved accordingly so this is going to be connected over here through the USB panel okay so mouse can be considered as the input okay some of the answers uh, I received just now is HDMI USB monitor speaker so let's look at another example here so monitor monitor will be going to be an output because you're going to receive this monitor going to receive the signal and going to 
uh, have the, the image on the monitor itself so it's going to be the output so the monitor will be connected through this uh, VGA connectors this is the old one this is a serial VGA I think so this is VGA connectors right now we have a lot of uh, we have few more different sound connector type which is HDMI and uh, USB is not yet we have uh, I think HD something HDMI and then the other one is not sure it's a display port I think uh, but it's okay it means that the monitor should be the output how about the speaker speaker can be connected to here so this is your speaker right so the signal will be out and then give to the output and your speaker will be going to have uh, the output from this one so this is going to be your output so for the USB and HDMI this is not input output this is just the interface this is the interface to connect your input and output to the computer motherboard alright so this is the one this is a PCI slots which is going to be as expand you, you can ex you can expand other other things over here for example you can you can put extra things okay uh what else and then let's move on then we are going to talk about what is a microprocessor okay this is a microprocessor right so you can see that uh, the microprocessor is not the whole set of the whole computer over here a microprocessor is a small component which is they call it a CPU uh, can be defined as central processing units on a single chip and need to be operational with the other devices such as memory, RAM, mouse, keyboard which is the I.O. devices so to make it work this microprocessor must have the other components such as the memory over here example here this is memory and you have this is uh, another card whatever it is uh, to slot maybe this is can be used for the uh, storage and this is your maybe your hard disk drive la, HDD Okay, the CPU is only here. This is the brain of your PC. This is your brain. This is the brain of your PC. Okay, so this is the latest one. I think this is a i7 could be the latest one for the CPU. And we're not we are not going to learn this one. We are going to learn this one. Very old CPU. The name of the CPU is Motorola 68K. Or I can write down is Motorola 68,000. Okay, so you can see that the packaging is a bit different. So this is the latest the technology. Of course, uh, the, the the in the future they will have different packaging to improvise or improve the current uh, the current technology. So you can see that how how it changed. Uh, through time so last time it's like this and now we have this type of uh, CPU and this is much better compared to this one okay so in CPU right when you want to purchase a CPU you are going to look at the speed normally what is the speed of it which is the gigahertz for example you have I'm not so sure what is gigahertz this is the speed of the CPU so the higher the speed is the higher it can process the faster it can process the information okay so that is the microprocessor so in this class what you're going to learn is how the skill you're going to learn is how to program basically how to write a program by using an assembly language which is to write down a code or a program which can be processed by your CPU and you can come up with the output later okay so this is the assembly language in first year you, are good, you have learned so far on the C++ which is the higher level language this is higher level language and the assembly language is the lowest language where you can touch the beat when you play with the program 
Okay. In C++, this is a language. You can see that you have the if else statement, something like that. So this is not going to be fine not going to be found in the SM language. You are going to learn a new language, but in terms of programming skill, it should be the same. Okay, this is how you're going to learn in the class. Okay, let's move on. So this is uh, 68K. So it has 64 pins. Eh? 64 pins means you can count from here. This is up to here and then go here. This is the last one. This is 64. This is 64 pins. All right. So why we are learning about this one? So to be frank, this is the one that been developed in UTEM. Uh, so far, this uh, microprocessor have been taught in UTM. So uh, this is the one that we bring over here uh, to teach you guys. So let's look at it later on the program. Okay. So how how a CPU can work. This is a block diagram, a standard block diagram. A CPU for the circuitry, basic circuitry, like right? this is a basic circuitry to work. It must have all of this. It needed for the microprocessor to work, such as the memory, input, output, and timing. This is the crystal oscillator and timing circuitry. So this is the one that going to, uh, what? going to impact on your processing time so the higher the speed the faster the processing time okay so this is related to the line here you can see that this is what it has la. parallel io this is a this is considered io you just have another types of io this is parallel or serial and then you have the circuitry over here you have the memory so it going to be connected all of this together Okay, so this is just a basic secretary. And the next one. Just now you learned about the CPU, right? But now in these slides, this is a microprocessor based system, which means that the system is using a CPU to work as a single entity. For example, you guys have your handphone here. If you can uh, look at your handphone, right? Then you can see that it has its own CPU. I'm not so, so sure about the handphone. Maybe you can see the Tegra. That's probably the, the, the brands of the uh, CPU of the handphones. So the calculator also has CPU inside here. Digital camera. Uh, this is what card reader. This is a radio, digital radio, right? So this is a printer or scanner. So all of this got CPU inside. So which means that if you have the CPU and memory and the I.O., then it can be called as a microprocessor-based system. Okay? okay, let's move on. Uh, the evolution, I'm going to touch because this is very old history. All right, so just move on. Okay, All right, this is the one, your hardware. Okay, in this hardware, right, I'm not going to touch everything for the first lecture. So in this hardware, you can see that this is your CPU just now. The original will be like this. Okay, this is the one just now, and this is uh, the, the 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 picture of it. Okay, you can see that you have the pin number one here up to pin sixty four. Now the specifications of this one, I'm going to touch everything. I'm going to touch over here first about the thirty two bit data and address register. Okay, this is the first one. The second one is this one. <coughs> 16-bit data bus and 24-bit address bus. So what does it mean here? 16-bit <coughs> means this CPU must have 16 pins of data pins. Okay. 24-bit address bus means it must has 24 pins of uh, address pin. Okay, that is the meaning of 16 bit data bus and 24 bit address bus. So here you look at this image and I just want you to look 
and concentrate only the two uh, area, two group, which is they call it D and A. Okay. So D is for the data bus, which is from here, this one. The naming convention will be starting from D0 to D15. This is going to be a total of 16 pins, which is correct. This is the one, they call it 16 pins, which is a data pins, and the name will be 16-bit data bus. Okay, because this is a pin, eh? this is a pin, the leg. Okay, let's look at the 24-bit address bus. So, if you look at A over here, right? So, A is going to be here, A1 up to A23. A0 is, uh, should be around here, one thing. Uh, this one we're going to learn in the uh, uh, design of the memory. So, you can see that here, the total pins of the address is 24 pins okay so so we have around this one a0 to a23 with a total of 24 pins okay so this is they call it a 24 bit address bus okay uh, what else then you have the 32 bit data and address registers. Okay, registers. Registers mean daftar in Bahasa Melayu. In Bahasa is daftar. So when I talk about registers, this is not the outside world of the microprocessor. When I talk about registers, it will be inside the CPU. You cannot see it. Okay, that one you have to work with the uh, simulator okay so the registers is inside the cpu the size will be 32 bit data and address register this is the size of it means that it will have up to 32 bit and uh, i mean 32 bit for both data and registers so this is how you want to understand what is the meaning of 16 bit 24 bit is based on this one Bit means you only can put a data with zero or one only. This is related to zero volt and one related to five volt. So this is the only values that can in it can set for that particular pins. So if that particular pin is five volt, means that the value will be one, zero volt, the value will be zero. So this is the two. Category first, I want you guys to understand about this one. So you have to understand what is the meaning of this one first. The rest, I'm not going to touch yet. Okay, so move on. The micro microcomputer architecture, of course, you have more than CPU, right? So this is actually the, uh, the, the just definitions of the microcomputer system. So that doesn't matter. This is not really important that. Okay, so what is the components? Microcomputer system organization. What are the components of the microcomputer systems? So it has three. Okay, the first one is the CPU. The second one is the memory, RAM or ROM. And the last one is the I.O. So you can go back to this one again, the motherboard just now when we uh, discuss about this one. This is actually a system, right? A full set system because it has a CPU. It has the RAM, which is the memory, and then it has the I.O. So that is the microcomputer system components. Okay, so all of these three components are connected through a medium called, they call it address bus, data bus, and control bus. Of course, you can see that from this image, right? CPU need to talk to the RAM, it using the PCB, this PCB has the connections between the CPU to the RAM. So this is the term they call it bus. Okay, this is a bus. Bus, bus, which is a medium 
to connect these three components. They call it bus. So we have three components. The first one, they call it address bus, which is to carry the address value of the memory. Data is the data to carry the data from the CPU to the memory. And the control bus is to bring the signal to control the operations for the system for this one for the CPU. All right. So this is the concept. Let's look at it. How the bus is connected through a block diagram. You can see that you have the processor, you have the memory, and then you have the I.O. over here. Okay. You have the output device and then you have the input device. You can see that the difference on the buses, right? So you have three different buses. You have the address bus, you have the data bus, and you have the control bus. Okay. The difference is for address bus is only one way direction. From CPU to outside is only one direction. Whereas for the data, right, you can send the data from the CPU to the I.O. to the memory and go back to the CPU again. So this is a two-way uh, bus. So the data can be from processor to the outside and from the outside to the processor. Compared to the address just now, you only have one way direction, it means that the CPU will generate the address data, address value, and this is going to be sent up out only, and that is the address that needed for the particular process. This one you have to learn it in the simulation because I have to show you what is actually happening when the address bus, uh, all data bus and control bus working together. So we're going to look at it later. So the function, okay, let's, let's redo again this one. So this one, you can see that this is uh, uh, 68K motherboard, right? This is consider 568K. This is your CPU area. This is 68K. And then this is your memory area. This is RAM. Uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe this one is something about the I.O. This is about the ROM. And this is connected out to your I.O. Okay, so it's complete, right? So the function for the address bus is to carry the address for the data inside the memory. This is carrying the address. This is very important. This is going to be a full chapter. Okay, the size is 24 bit. All right, then the function of the data bus is to carry the data in and out from microprocessor. They call it 16 bit. So remember this one 16 bit just now? Why 16 bit is because of you have only 60 pins of the uh, CPU 68K. You only have 16 pins for data pins. That's why they call it over here. You can allow to carry the data out from the micro P up to 16 bit. So one shot, one shot, the data can come out only total of 16 bit. You cannot have more than that because the limitations of the hardware. Okay. okay, next one. The last one, control bus. The function of control bus is to carry the signal which is used to control the devices and status of the devices. This is the signal uh, needed to be processed again, right? I mean, uh, this is going to work together, but the concept and the, the functions is a bit different uh, to carry the signal to control the devices. So this is a three buses that you need to understand how it works. Okay, let's move on. So after that, the microcomputer system, now we go back to the CPU again. So what is CPU? This is your CPU, just on 68K. So CPU is the brain for the whole system. This is the place where it calculates or process all the information. Eh? It controls the total operation being done by the system. And it's also execute the instructions inside the memory. So it will execute the instructions, and this is going to be uh, a process later. The components of the CPU. So this CPU has three components. One, they call it register. Basin IO is DAFTA. Second one is arithmetic logic unit, which is ALU. 
and the third one is a control unit right so this is a three main components so this is different from the microcomputer system which is this one is now a system for microcomputer have cpu have memory have the io whereas just now cpu also have another three components which is the register arithmetic logic unit and control unit this is all inside the cpu so register is a memory eh? register is a memory inside the cpu uh, if you can uh, understand that register is just a, a place where you can put uh, something inside the, inside it lah, register so for example if you have a cache register this is the one that uh, we, we discussed just now cache register the cache register is like this when you go to my din right or whatever mcdonald then you will have the cache register over here inside this cache register it has a compartment where you can slot the money inside this one and then you you can push this uh, uh register go back and then it will start again to calculate and then it will it will come out and then you can put the money so you can see that a register is somewhere that you can put something over here you can put i mean it's a, a place to store same goes to CPU, right? So it means that a register means something that a place that you can store a value, then you can do something over there. So that's the concept of register, eh? Okay, let's move on. So the three main components, eh? Just now we just have this one. So the, the, the definitions of the uh, main components, which is the register, this is a fast memory to store the information while operation or to save the information being processed. So that is the uh, definition of a register. The next one is the arithmetic logic unit, which is the ALU, which is to process the data or executing the logic operation and arithmetic for the data received from the memory of the input devices. Okay, so this is uh, a process of executing the logic operation. Okay, maybe you want to add two, two data, you want to store here, you want to store there. So this is the where the arithmetic logic unit will do. Okay, the last one is control unit. It's, the main function is to control the operation for all units by using control signal and facing. This is three components of your CPU. You can just look at a block diagram like this. This is a register. This is control unit. So this is an ALU. And you can see that from outside here, you can have the address bus. This is a data bus. And this is control bus. This is inside your CPU and this is outside your cpu inside okay so to recap in this first lecture what we're going to learn what we have learned so far is uh, related to the term of the cpu and the concept of cpu so you have learned so far on the 68k uh, the concept of it the, the hardware of it so how, how the terminology looks like so this is all the things that you need to digest and to understand. Else, on the next lecture, when I start to talk about all this terminology, you may get lost because you do not understand what is actually I'm talking about. Okay, so that's the first one for the uh, first uh, lecture. So we're going to meet again on the second lecture related to the memory. Thank you very much.